Hello again, and welcome to another exciting episode of Social Studies. And today, um, this I'm going to try to keep this one short. I'm also going to try to keep this one upbeat because sometimes I've heard that um, maybe I'm not quite as exciting on video as I am in person. So I'm going to try to be a little more enthusiastic, um, although I'm guessing that might not work out. But anyways, we are talking about other explorers you should know. We got this started in class probably, but this is on your pink sheet. The only section that is not yet filled in in the Age of Exploration sheet, other explorers you should know. Um, other explorers you should know. Now, we know that people were exploring, including Columbus. They were motivated by the three Gs, gold, God, and glory. Originally, the main thing they're going to be looking for is trade, specifically trade with Asia. They wanted a water route to Asia. That's what Columbus is looking for. And that's really what the early, the, the many of the early explorers will be looking for. So it's this section of the notes right here. And don't worry, I will give you a chance to pause the video and fill in these notes um, later on. So we already talked about in, I think I got it in both Cherry and Gray cohorts, um, Mr. Magellan, Magellan who supposedly gets credit for circumnavigating the globe. I'm not going to go through all of that again. Um, although if you're looking for a good long book to read, Over the Edge of the World was the name of the book that I read that was about Magellan's voyage around the world. All right. Um, one thing you should know just to help you out here on our little homework assignment slash quiz that I will give later just to make sure everyone has actually watched the video. One of these answers is going to involve something that's not specifically in the notes, um, and that is the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage was the name of the water route that explorers thought that they would find um, through North America in order to get to Asia. So common theme with all of the explorers over time, and this is a period of about a hundred and some years, so it's going to, the, the explorer's knowledge of the world will be different at different points. Um, these are the earliest ones. They're looking for a water route to Asia. Remember, Columbus thinks that he has reached Asia um, in all his voyages. He thinks he has sailed around the world to the Indies. He's actually here. Now, it's going to take a little while with different explorers exploring different areas before and then writing about them and other other explorers reading about these and before they start to put the pieces together and realize that this is not Asia here, this is actually some new world, quote unquote, new world that they had not previously known about. Um, so it's going to kind of be a common theme. They're trying to reach Asia. They think they've reached Asia. They realize they're not reaching Asia. Asia, sorry. But um, then they're looking for this Northwest Passage. They're not so much originally interested in this land itself as getting through this land. They, they believe there must be a waterway through this land, and they have no idea how large it is. But they think they have to get through here somehow to get to Asia, to continue around the world. Remember, they're still discovering how large the world is. Um, so they're looking for the Northwest Passage, and they will try different routes, which will lead to different areas of discovery. Uh, I think in both classes, both cohorts, we talked about John Cabot and the Newfoundland that he sailed to way up here, Newfoundland, Canada. And as a result of this, England is going to claim all of North America, whatever it ends up being here, they're going to claim it. And that is why, why we own the land that we own today. We can thank John Cabot. Um, by the way, I hope you all enjoyed your Columbus Day. Um, we talked about how you claim land. This was, we talked about in class in both groups, I think, as well, and how Russia has tried to claim the North Pole by planting a flag in underneath the ice caps of the North Pole. And the United States has said, no, you can't claim lands anymore. Um, and that's kind of, you don't need to know that. That's just information you might be interested in. Okay, something you do need to know here is the St. Lawrence River. So there's two rivers in this unit you should know. 
Um, the St. Lawrence is this one from Lake Ontario. It flows all this water through the Great Lakes, eventually flows through the St. Lawrence River and into the Atlantic Ocean up here. Um, so this is an important waterway and this is where France is going to some French explorers while looking for a water route to Asia. They're going to think this might be the way through. They're going to explore this and cl claim land along the way. First was Jacques Cartier, or Cart Cartier sails up the St. Lawrence River, um, realizes it's not a Northwest Passage, but claims the land for France, which will later become New France and Quebec, and Quebec and then part of New France, and um, that is why they speak French there. Uh, many years later, another man named Samuel de Champlain sails along the same area, St. Lawrence River, Great Lakes Lake Champlain, and forms an alliance with the Algonquin Indians, um, who are at the time involved in a war against the Iroquois. France forms this important alliance with the Algonquins, which will last for many years and will eventually put us on put the 13 British colonies on a path to independence. But that's down the road at this point still. All right, um, another river you should know. Oh, well, this is, I'm sorry. But this is another map that you're going to see quite a bit this year. This is showing where the different countries came in, where their explorers went, and eventually where they claimed land, colonies, etc. So this first one we're looking at here, this is the French area, French explorer Champlain Cartier, and then later others who you don't need to know. St. Lawrence River here, Great Lakes region down the Mississippi River. This is the Mississippi River down here to New Orleans, which is why New Orleans um, will become a French colony way down here. Uh, we'll find out later on um, this week that the fur trade, beaver furs, play a very big part in the French expansion in claiming lands here. But at this point, they're just exploring, looking for the Northwest Passage. They don't find it here, but this will have, it's laying the groundwork for New France. Um, next one, guy you do not need to know. I'm going to try to go really fast here because you don't need to know Giovanni de Verrazzano. Um, I promise you I will not ask about him on a test. But now that you're curious about him, hopefully, he is sailing for France. Um, that means not sailing to France, working for France. Explored and mapped the East Coast or the Atlantic Coast of what is now the United States. So basically, he is the first person to sail along this coast looking for the Northwest Passage. Um, but he will be the first one to really lay out a map of what this area looks like, what will eventually become uh, the 13 colonies will become our East Coast or our Atlantic Coast today. Um, that was in 50. He was, so the country there, if you're filling in, was France. Um, now, just an interesting side note. Uh, a lot last year, two years, two summers ago, I was down in Delaware running along the beach and I came across this interesting monument to Giovanni de Verrazzano. This is not his biggest monument. His biggest one is a bridge in New York City, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The Ver Verrazano Narrows is um, this waterway named after him. Um, and I believe this is probably why New York State wants us to teach you about Verrazano is because millions of students live in New York City and they've probably heard of this bridge. So there's making a connection for them. Um, next one you do need to know, a guy named Henry Hudson. Henry Hudson was from Holland. Henry Hudson was from Holland. Keep, if you start thinking about that now, Henry Hudson from Holland, that will make your life easier down the road as well. He is going to find two important things, only one of which we care about. The other is interesting, but the one is important. They're both going to be named after him, Henry Hudson. So Henry Hudson is from this, if you look right here, the Netherlands. Another name for the Netherlands is Holland. And Amsterdam is the capital of Holland. This area right here, these people um, are going to be important in Europe. They were not, you can see, they're not the biggest country, but they have a few things going for them. One is um, trade. They are very into trade and doing business. 
and they don't care so much about who they're trading with as long as they can be trading and doing business. And they are going to be ahead of their time in developing a capitalism, which we'll learn about later, um, a republic form of government, which we'll learn about later. But this little country here is going to become very powerful. Now, the age of exploration, they, like everyone else, are looking for a water route to Asia. And they hire Henry Hudson. And Henry Hudson's first attempt is to sail up here by almost up near the polar ice caps. It's really, really cold. It ends up they are not able to get through this way because of all the ice and it's just too rough of conditions. So they turn around and head back this way. This is a long voyage. Um, but eventually you can see him bopping around in here. Right here is the key. They're going to go up this river thinking this might be the Northwest Passage. It is not. It is going to be this river right here, um, the Hudson River. All right. It was not originally at the time called the Hudson River. It was called, well, I don't know what it was called. The Indians, I'm sure, had a name for it, but we don't. I don't know what that was. But nowadays it is known as the Hudson River after Henry Hudson. And it's good to know um, up here on this end is going to be Albany. Down at the other end, which when I scroll down, that thing is going to pop up and you won't be able to see it. So look now. Down at the other end of the river right here, you see Long Island and New York City would be right down here. But this Hudson River is going to be very important in seventh grade social studies. So learn where the Hudson River is. So you have the St. Lawrence River is up here. The Hudson River is right here. You don't need to know the Mohawk River. Um, eventually, you'll need to know the Erie Canal that goes across here, but not yet. Right now, we're just worrying about the Hudson River and the St. Lawrence River. All right. Um, now, this is the part you don't need to know, but still an interesting story. Henry Hudson from Holland, um, on his second voyage in 1610, the so-called Voyage of Discovery, he is sailing, looking still for that Northwest Passage, and he sails into here Hudson Bay, which, again, is named after him. And you can see Hudson Bay, he comes into here, he pops around, bops around, he doesn't head back. Hmm, what's up with that? Well, notice how far north this is. If we are located down here, this is quite a ways up in Canada. Um, and even north of Newfoundland, which is way up there. So they're looking for the Northwest Passage. And what ends up happening, his crew finally, after all this, all this searching, his crew has had enough. They give up. They have a mutiny. They take over the ship. And they put him and his son, his 15-year-old, I believe, son, um, they put them on a little raft and leave them stranded in the middle of this Hudson Bay. And they leave them. And that's the last we will ever hear of Henry Hudson. So I, I have to assume he didn't make it. Um, you never know, but we never hear from him again. But they had these two things named after him. So uh, this is a recreation of Henry Hudson's from Holland's ship. I don't know if this is supposed to be a recreation down at the bottom of him and his son being shoved off, if that disappears um, in the middle of the Hudson Bay, but just an interesting story. All right, anyways, so you notice here the Dutch. Oh, the Dutch. Who are the Dutch? The Dutch is another name. People from Holland or the Netherlands are called Dutch. So the Dutch, their settlement is going to be right here along the Hudson River. Um so this could be Holland, this could be, this will become the New Netherlands colony eventually. All right, that brings us to, um, we're going to be talking about the Spanish down here. Now, we've been talking about gold, God, glory previously. So far, these people are mostly interested in gold, what we've talked about so far. Not necessarily literal gold, although they'd love that, but they're looking for trade routes to Asia, a water route to Asia. Things are going to change a little bit with Spain, who is really interested in real gold and in God. Now, this is more information than you need to know for seventh grade, but it never hurts to know too much. Um, so this is a guy named Martin Luther. Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther. Martin Luther is going to become famous in 1517 in Germany, what is now Germany. Um, he he is going to set off something called the Protestant Reformation. Reformation has the word reform in it, which means to like remake, to improve, um, to get rid of, solve problems, etc. associated with something. So 
if you look at this map over here, this is basically what happens. And remember, event at one point, and notice where here's Italy, Mediterranean Sea, all of Europe under the Roman Empire, all of the Europe, all of Europe was Christian, specifically Catholic, because Catholic and Christian were the same thing for thousands of years, for over a thousand years, uh, fifteen hundred years at least. All of this was the same thing. There were none of these denominations existed. Martin Luther, Martin Luther gets this idea that this church, this Catholic church, has lots of problems. He says, um, you know, the priests are all corrupt. They're they're making themselves rich. They're doing things like um, taking bribes, like saying, hey, if you pay me some money, I will guarantee you a spot in heaven and sort of doing some shady things. So he lists these complaints. He comes up with a list of 99 complaints and he nails them to this church door in Germany. And this gets passed around, thanks in part to the printing press, um, and kind of get, leads lots of people to question the Catholic Church. Now remember, the Pope, the leader of the Catholic Church, had been kind of the unofficial ruler of all of Europe that power starts to crumble. Now, it doesn't crumble completely because the Catholic Church, even today, is a very large, very powerful organization. Um, but Christianity splits into different branches. And the other group that, that does not remain Catholic um, because they are protesting, protest, are called Protestants. And these are going to include groups Lutherans, Calvins, which will include the Puritans, Presbyterians, different denominations. What does this have to do with explorers? Well, it kind of sets off this competition and um, and lots of unrest in Europe, lots of persecuting people if they're the, if they are in the wrong category here in their country. So it's going to spur on more people looking to both spread their religion and to escape to have freedom of religion. So that's what leads to. Spain. All right. The Spain are very Catholic and they want to spread the religion. Now, after Columbus, they send over, they start sending over lots of explorers and we're not going to worry about their individual names. We're going to lump them all together as a group called the conquistadors. Conquistadors means conquerors. These are going to be Spanish explorers who conquered the Incas and Aztecs and they're going to search for the fabled seven cities of gold. You may have heard of El Dorado. Um, the seven cities of gold, they believe there's this myth and the Native Americans tell them that there's these other cities that are made of gold and they want to find these seven cities of gold, but they also want to spread their Christian, aka Catholic religion. Now, what does that, they are going to, well, let me go back here. They're going to travel all throughout this, what is now the Southwest United States. And this is why today in the United States, which is an English speaking um, country where where religion, there's freedom of religion and everything. We have all of these cities that have Catholic Spanish names like San Francisco, which means St. Francis, San Jose, St. Joseph, um, St. Louis Obispo, St. Louis, Santa Barbara, St. Barbara. San Diego, St. James, Los Angeles, the Angels, etc., etc. So you have all of these Spanish Catholic names as a result of this being explored by the Spanish, the conquistadors. Um, so, well, this is the map. So they're going to be mostly Spanish, Spanish explorers are going to be mostly down in the, the West Indies, um, the Caribbean, South America, but they, they're going to come up here and ventured through what is the Southwest, now the Southwest United States. This is Spanish here, and they're going to be claiming lands here while looking for the cities of gold. Another Spanish explorer to know is this guy. He was one of the conquistadors. He was also a member of um, Columbus's voyage, his first voyage. He is going to explore, come up from the Caribbean and explore Florida. Now, He's going to name it Florida. He is actually looking for something even more valuable than gold. He is looking for eternal life. He has heard stories of something called the Fountain of Youth, which I'm not sure if you would have to bathe in it or drink it. I'm not really sure which way it worked, but it would keep you young forever. You would not age. You would not grow old. Grow old. 
Now, he does not find the Fountain of Youth. As far as we know, it doesn't exist. Um, so, but while he finds, while he's there, he claims Florida for Spain. Uh, okay, Ponce de Leon, Spain. Okay, now this next thing we're going to do, we're, I think all we're up to is left. By this point, I'm sorry, got a little ahead of myself there. By this point, um, after many years of exploring, even though I didn't have these in chronological order, um, these people have put together that this is not necessarily Asia anymore. And they're still looking for the Northwest Passage, but it leaves us the question of, well, wait, why, what is this then? So these are some various maps that are interesting to look at um, from over the years. And I'm not going to, I'll try not to go too long, but this one is 1540. So 1540 is what, 48 years after Columbus, about almost 50 years after Columbus. And by this point, based on several explorers, they have put together this map of the world, of the new world. Oh, sorry. You can see here is Novus Orbitus, which means new world. And you can kind of piece together a little bit of it. Um, this is the part claimed by France here. Uh, down here is Florida. Here's Cuba. This is what is now Mexico and South America. Um, but they don't really have a good idea of what this North America, what the shape of that is going to be. They think that Japan is right off the coast of North America. They still have a ways to go. Um, this one is 1562, a little bit later. This is just the east coast of what is now the United States. And just to give you an idea, this is Florida down here. Um, this, this is going up the east coast. These are monsters, sea monsters, and other various creatures. This one is 1566. Now we're starting to get a better idea of what the world looks like. Right here is Italy in the Mediterranean Sea. To give you an idea, here's Africa. Here is South America. Um, here are the Caribbean islands, Florida, and then this thing that looks like a banana is North America. They still haven't, they really don't have much idea of what that looks like, but they're starting to realize by now that this is a continent. And they're hoping to find the water route through here. Um, 15, 16, 15, 1656, so this is over 150 years after Columbus. They've pieced together a lot more. Here's Florida, Cuba. The Gulf of Mexico, it's starting, everything's starting to take shape, except for here, California. They have California being this huge island off the coast that's a separate, separate continent, almost a separate island from North America. So they didn't have that quite right. Um, this is just New England. We don't need to really see that now. 1707, we're into the 1700s. By now, they have North and South America much better um, more accurately described, except for still here, California as a separate island. I'm not sure why they had that idea, but they did. All right, the most famous thing, and I want to wrap this up because I've talked for way longer than I wanted to. Sorry about that. This is probably the most famous, important map for many reasons. This is a map made in 1507. This is, so we're going back, those other maps were up to more recent times, but 1507 is what 15 years after Christopher Columbus's voyage. Now this is a whole map of the world by a guy named a German guy named Waldsmuller, who was hired um, to make this map of the world. And you can see here is Africa. It's kind of this would be Europe, Asia over here. Um, and then here, this thing, it's hard to tell what it is. But this is South America here. This is North America. Not very accurate. However, this is the guy, this one, there was a guy named Amerigo Vespucci. And Amerigo Vespucci is really the first one to put together all of these little pieces, these hints and clues that explorers had left and piece them together. And he came up with the idea that, you know what, this is in Asia over here. This is a whole new world, a new land, a new continent that we did not know of previously, that we didn't know exist over in Europe. We didn't know about this. Um, and because his name was Amerigo Vespucci, and he's the one who came up with this idea, when Waldsmuller made this map, 
He didn't know what to call this new land, so he called it Amerigo's land. But because things on, because continents were named um, with Latin feminine words, they changed Amerigo to America. And this is going to be the first map that actually labels the name America on a map. And then soon other map makers would follow this and um, America would become America. That's how it gets its name. All right, now you can pause here or I will sit here for 10 minutes in silence while you write. No, I'm not going to do that. You can pause and fill this in. Uh, for some reason, I forgot to fill in Amerigo Vespucci at the bottom, but once this disappears, I will tell you what it says. Amerigo Vespucci, 1499, claimed Columbus and Cabot found new land, not Asia. Not Asia, okay? And... The name America is based on his name. All right. Um, that's all for now. And thank you for watching. I will see you soon.